everyone, I'm Nina Zeta with Sidewalker Daily, and in today's video, we are going to talk about something that happens far too often to far too many of us, and this is social media burnout. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We work with a lot of influencers, content creators, bloggers, creatives, freelancers. So social media is like really a big, big chunk of these people's lives. And as a business coach and strategist, my job is to help, you know, my clients, the influencers, the content creators get efficient, right? And help them weed through the mess and figure out like the best strategy to implement to grow their business. But social media burnout is like this, I don't know, like this disease that's kind of like infiltrating so many of us. And it's because so many of us are bootstrapped you know, social media is such a big part of our business. We feel the need to always be on because we work and get paid in a capacity that requires us to be on. And it's kind of like this guilty feeling of, you know, not biting the hand that feeds you, right? So like for my influencers, you know, Instagram gives them so much work, yet it's the thing that also like gives them so much stress, fatigue, I guess, mental health, depression, comparison, all these things, you know? So it's like this tension, this feeling of like, okay, I love what I do and I love the freedom that I get with my work, but I also am like drowning in the platform itself and the need to always constantly be posting. So I get it. And I think that in this video, what we're, what my goal is, is to give you a few tangible tips on different strategies you can take to help avoid social media burnout. And, you know, like I say, I guess, social media, right? It's like the internet. It's like a, it's like they say about guns or whatever. It's a tool, right? It can be used to protect. It can be used to kill. I guess it's the same with social media. It can be used to grow your business and do awesome things, but it can also be a cause of, like I said, mental health and depression and all that stuff. So it's how we use this tool. So let's jump in on some tips. Now, the first strategy I'm going to give you bear with me, is um, the f is actually getting two phones. Now, before you go, Nina, I don't have that type of money. You know, I don't want to be, what do you mean two phones? So let's think about like back in the day, right? People used to have their business Blackberry and then their personal phone. I think the issue now that we're having is our iPhones and our Androids. It's like this one-stop shop, right? It's our email, it's our Instagram, it's our social, which is our free time, it's our information source, Google, it's our weather tracker, it's our calculator when we need to leave tip. I mean, it's everything. And while that is awesome, it's also a nightmare because it's hard to separate. Um, you see so many people, for example, that have like iPhone addictions or game addictions is because there's no there's no like space, there's no separation. So what my business partner actually did is she bought like, well, we call it like her burner phone. So she actually had two phones. And on her business phone, that's where you would find the Instagrams, the social medias, the email. And on her second, and that phone did not have cellular service, by the way. Um, it was just more like it connected to Wi-Fi and it had all the like things that we needed for work. And then the other phone, which was a way more inexpensive phone, that was more, you know, that, that didn't have any of the apps on it. Um, and that's the phone you would take to dinner or to spend time with family and leave your work phone behind. Now that may not work, I guess, for everyone. Um, but if you can make that small little investment, you are going to feel crazy difference in having, you know, your work phone, which may be your camera and all that good stuff, and then your personal phone and not putting any of those apps on your personal phone. Um, it's going to help you be a lot more present also when you don't have, you know, the work phone with you. Now, if you can't get a second phone, which I know a lot of you may not be able to, you can look into different apps that block like social media usage. Yes, that does exist. And you can also turn off your notifications. So you're not getting that little buzz every time someone comments or leaves a, you know, like or whatever it is, or even an email. It just interrupts what you're doing. If let's just say you're like in the middle of doing work and then those emails keep like dinging, how are you supposed to get anything done? So part of being efficient is also setting those boundaries as to, you know, what notifications you're going to leave on. Um, and if you find an app that that, like blocks your social media that can also help you you know turn off 
Another tool to prevent social media burnout is really just getting organized with your social media. So working with a tool that will post for you, you know, whether it's Planoli or Later, there's tons of social media posting tools. You guys can use these. Now this does require getting organized. You know, you may have to build out your social media calendar ahead of time and your captions ahead of time. And yes, it will take some upfront work to sit and schedule and post. But if you're able to get organized, especially from a content side on social media and just schedule it out, then you don't have to be on it every single day posting and posting. Yeah, you may want to go in and engage and comment and like and do like a little bit of housekeeping, but you're not like spending the bulk of your time. What do I edit? What do I post? So definitely consider getting organized as a way to help prevent social media burnout. Now, the third tip is a no brainer, but it's unfollow people that stress you. Now, you may not know like how to identify that person, but a lot of us follow accounts that don't always make us feel good. And I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a victim of that as well. And I follow accounts that I'm just like, why am I even following them? I don't even like them, you know? And you're not doing that creator service either, honestly, by following them to not really engage with them or feel, if you don't feel good about them. So they probably want you to unfollow them as well. I know for us, like when people unsubscribe from our email list or unfollow us, you know, they're actually doing us a favor because they're not there they don't want what we have to give. Um, so if you take some time to unfollow people that stress you out on social, I think you'll see that that may actually bring a positive effect to how, you know, that burnout feeling because you're no longer comparing yourself or feeling negative, um, having any sort of like, I don't guess, negative vibe towards anyone. Um, that definitely causes a lot of social media like stress and just unfollow those people. Another easy, easy tip to help prevent social media burnout is to pick and stick and get rid of platforms you are not using. Yes, you heard me correctly. If a platform, a social media platform is not serving you, get rid of it. You know, why have a Twitter with three tweets or a Pinterest board with one board? You know, it's too much to manage. I think that social media is like, I call it kind of like the alter egos, right? Each each social media platform showcases a different side of us. So TikTok may be like our silly side at home, you know? Instagram is like how we want to look. LinkedIn is like your business, you know, your business space. Facebook is like when you're just being a grandma with your friends and posting photos and whatever, news articles. They each pull a different string, so to speak. And I think a big part of social media burnout is not knowing, it's trying to do it all. It's trying to manage it all. It's trying to be on everything at once. You know, a lot of people in this industry are on this content overload and they're like, the more content you produce, the better. Um, I think people that speak like that may have better equipped teams to help them post that. You know, they may have the structure in place. Maybe they just love posting and that's part of like what they do. Now, I will say being an influencer, I do like to, you know, if you're working an eight hour job and this is part of being, this is part of your job is being on your phone and being engaging and storing, then it kind of comes with the territory. So if it's causing you a lot of stress, you may want to rethink this whole influencer world. Um, and the ways that you can bypass that, I think, is by getting organized and shooting content like batching it. And as I know, a lot of influencers, they um, don't post live, right? So their stories are even from like two days ago. Uh, they're, that helps them not feel like they need to be on all the time. But yeah, just getting rid of different platforms too is going to truly help you with that burnout feeling because you're going to do better at a few than do, you know, not so good at a bunch. Now, this tip is um, this tip is for people who are a little bit more advanced in their content creator influencer, I guess, um, space. It's to hire a social media assistant. If you are in the financial position that you can hire someone to help like take that burden off you, I would absolutely recommend it. What with us, you know, we've had I've had 
my own different companies and I've been able to hire tons of different staff. And it's really when we have staff that we are able to grow, that I don't feel as shackled, my business partner doesn't feel as shackled. Obviously it's important to keep your ear to the pavement, never lose sight of like what got you to where you are, but at the same time, it's gonna free up your time. So if it is a financial, um, if it's possible for you to make that decision, absolutely consider it. And if you don't know if that's something that you should be doing, I'm gonna leave a link below to our coaching. We provide 30 minute sessions, one hour sessions, and we can help you with all those sort of strategic business decisions. And lastly, which is probably one of the most important tips to avoid social media burnout, is to get offline and do some good old fashioned volunteering, networking, um, doing things that bring you happiness that don't have to do with social media. Now, the reason I say volunteering is because I think that as a social media creator, um, it's really part of your responsibility to to find different causes that not only motivate you, but that you can share with your audience. Um, using social media for good is really something that we should all be doing way, way, way more of, um, not just like randomly. It should be an integral part of how we use social media. So I would definitely recommend looking into volunteering opportunities and not being on your phone while you're doing it, but again, actually just being present feeling gratitude for, you know, where you are. And then yes, sharing that story with your audience in the future so, um, to inspire them to give back and do good. So hopefully you guys like this video on, you know, ways to combat social media burnout. I'd be interested to hearing any tips that you have used. Leave them in the comments below. If you like our channel, make sure to subscribe. It fuels my fire, keeps me going. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.